Okay, so we're gonna walk through how to track a transaction on ThorSwap. So if you're doing a swap and you're unsure if it's going through or what the status of that transaction is, this will show you exactly how to make sure everything is on track. So we're gonna be using a few different resources and these can be found right from ThorSwap under more. Uh, under explorers and tools, you'll find pretty much everything we're going to be talking about. So thoryield.com, or the block explorers. These are the ThorChain block explorers. And when you're doing your transactions, ThorSwap will also show you the other chain explorers. So for example, if you're doing a Bitcoin transaction, it'll link out to the Bitcoin block explorer. We'll also have all these links down below this video or somewhere around wherever you're watching this. So for an example swap, let's just swap from Rune to, let's just do some BNB and just select how much I want and swap and confirm. So you'll see the transaction pending here and you'll see a link out to a block explorer. So in this example, we're seeing a ThorChain block explorer because we're sending in from Rune on ThorChain. If we were swapping from BTC to BNB, then this link would be to a Bitcoin block explorer. So it actually already confirmed these are fast chains, but if you were stuck here, if you're using a slower chain, uh, this is how you would do it. So on the Thorchain block explorer, this is viewblock.io. You could also use thorchain.net. And then I'll also show you the thoryield.com transaction tracker. So from the block explorer link, just copy the transaction hash, which will look something like this and you can take that over to Thor Yield. And when you put your transaction in here, you'll see the status right there. And you can see it's already done, but if it was not, you would see that it was pending. One thing to note is if you're doing larger transactions, you will see that sometimes you can actually see all the public ones that are pending. Uh, and this is just a security feature. So when there's a very large transaction, there will be a bit of a delay to send the outbound transaction from ThorChain to your other wallet. So for example, this person is swapping $83,000 worth of Rune to Bitcoin. So we're seeing that there's a, a security countdown there. So let's do a slower swap so you can see how that goes. So let's swap from this BNB to native Bitcoin, which is a slow chain. So let's go ahead and swap. So now you see that the BNB is pending on its way into ThorChain. So we've got a link to the BNB block explorer. And here you'll see all the details of that inbound transaction. So it's going into ThorChain with a specific message saying, hey, I want this much Bitcoin out to my Bitcoin address. And the from is the BNB address you just sent from. And this is the ThorChain BNB vault that it's going into. So we can copy our transaction hash right here. And if we put that into Thor yield for the transaction hash, we'll see that it is done. And that doesn't mean that the BTC is necessarily in our wallet, but that means that the BTC has initiated its way out from Thor chain back to us. So if we go back over to Thor swap and we can check on that slow Bitcoin transaction by going over to our Bitcoin account, clicking the outbound link to a Bitcoin block explorer, and here we'll see there's an unconfirmed transaction. Uh, and this is just due to the fact that Bitcoin is slow. So if you hadn't received your Bitcoin or you couldn't spend it yet, you could go over here and see, oh, that, that's why. It's because this Bitcoin transaction hasn't fully been received yet. Let's just do another swap or two for the sake of the example. Let's swap some Rune to, let's go with some Litecoin. So again, you'll see your inbound transaction here, the rune going in. You can track this on the ThorChain Block Explorer and you'll see all the details of your transaction. It's going in, it's a swap. You're expecting to receive this much Litecoin on the way out. And you could also search this on ThorChain.net if you wanted to. Similar tracking here, you can see that it's pending. And again, we can put that transaction hash into Thor Yield. And you'll see that it says done. That means the Litecoin has started its journey back out to us. So if for some reason on your ThorChain Block Explorer, if this, if this failed for some reason, then you would see 
why and it would come back to you and you'd be able to address that issue and uh, try it again. So in this case, we're expecting our Litecoin back. Let's give a refresh and we can see that Litecoin has arrived. We can check our Litecoin block explorer and here we'll see it's still unconfirmed. Uh, Litecoin is relatively slow, not as slow as Bitcoin. So we can see that while that balance is already showing in our wallet, this transaction still needs more time to fully confirm. So you wouldn't be able to send this back out or do another swap immediately. You could just keep watching this page until you saw that it was fully confirmed. So a couple of minutes later, we can see that this transaction has confirmed. It no longer says unconfirmed up here. So let's do one more just example. Let's do some liquidity pooling. So go over to liquidity and let's add some of that Litecoin that we just got. And let's add some Litecoin and Rune to this liquidity pool to earn yield. Sign the transaction. And so we'll see the Rune and the Litecoin are headed to the Litecoin pool. And we'll see two pending transactions here. So let's track both of these. Immediately it's saying we didn't find the transaction. So just give it a second and refresh. And Yep, we can see add liquidity. This rune has already gone in. And let's track the Litecoin side. And similar to that last example, we can see it's still unconfirmed. So we don't need to worry. We just know that this transaction is, is on its way through. We can also see on ThorSwap, the fact that this is still spinning doesn't mean anything is wrong. It's just sensing that on that explorer, as we just saw, the transaction is not actually finished yet. So after a couple of minutes, this is showing that it's a success and you can confirm that on the block explorer shows that it confirmed. So again, if it seems like nothing's happening, it's probably just that one of the chains that you're using is not relatively instant and that transaction is just waiting for confirmation. Same thing would apply on the way out. If we were ready to withdraw our LP units, we would just withdraw. Let's pull all of this out. And we can go ahead and track this. So this is showing the transaction to start pulling that liquidity out. And for an outbound transaction from withdrawing, we can take this transaction hash and put it into the Thor yield transaction tracker. And we'll, we'll be able to see that everything's looking good here. And back on ThorSwap says the rune side is finished. We saw that Litecoin finished we can see still unconfirmed. So while the balance might be reflecting in our wallet, we're just waiting on that confirmation until it's sendable again. So hopefully that helps clear up any confusion or concern you're having if you feel a transaction is stuck or pending because you're dealing with native assets, different blockchains have different speeds. And so that's how to track various swaps or liquidity ads and withdraw. And if you do feel like something's wrong or you're hitting some sort of error, you can hop into the ThorSwap Discord and open a support ticket. There's 24-7 support and somebody will absolutely get you sorted out right away.